Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. So my name is Teacher Joko. I've been uh, here uh, at Edulink for nine years, uh, since uh, 2014, and uh, started teaching IELTS in 2015. So I've had some experience uh, uh, with this particular uh, topic. Uh, about four years ago, I began to uh, consider uh, IELTS tutoring and IELTS prep as very much as a hobby as well as much as my job. And so uh, I've been involved with uh, people online and uh, uh, tutoring them in terms of uh, what's most important for achieving success. So what I'm going to talk about today is going to come in several parts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting to know, get to know the IELTS. Part one today. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about uh, some general information about the IELTS test. And we're going to look at the band descriptors. Well, not, not the musical band, but the band scores. And how to achieve what you need. Uh -huh. So now, of course, you guys are here because you're going to be taking the IELTS at some time in the future. And you're going to need a particular mark to, to attain your goals. Now, uh, what is a passing mark in the IELTS test is not an easy question. It's not, there is no such thing. There are no passing or failing marks in IELTS, just whether or not you achieve what you uh, are, look, are trying to get. Well, how hard is that to do? Well, uh, let's look at what so what the 2022 uh, results were worldwide, worldwide. Look at everybody in the world. And we can see, uh -huh. here's the worldwide average, it's from IELTS.org. Okay. You can see there's two types of IELTS tests. The academic, oh, why is this not? So, you see here. So, uh, this is from 2022. Worldwide average, when we look at an overall. Okay, so worldwide, 2022, average mark amongst females, 6.28 amongst males, 6.22. That is for the academic test. So, uh, how about Myanmar? Well, they're in the most recent rankings, the, they looked at 40 different countries around the world, and you can see, where is Myanmar? 17th out of 40. Um, as you can see, the, the countries that border Myanmar are in orange here in this picture. And uh, this is in, you can see overall results, 6.6. .6. That beats all the neighboring countries. So, yay. Okay. But the, and then the top countries, as you might expect, places like Malaysia and the Philippines, where English has one of their main official languages since they became countries uh, for various reasons. Uh, Indonesia is surprisingly high, uh, and if we look at this, places like the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Japan, does there, is there a connection between how rich a country is and their scores in the IELTS? Not from these numbers, you see the more, some of the more wealthy nations like Japan and the UAE uh, have the lowest of these, of these particular choices. Okay, right. So are you surprised where Myanmar is worldwide? This presentation was about three years ago, and I didn't have these statistics. Latest I could find at that time was 2012. 2012, the average score was a, whoops, go back, 5.95 in Myanmar. So it's improved a lot. Thanks to Edgelink. <laughs> now, take a look at this chart. These show, I've just chosen some countries, two up near the top, said Malaysia and the Philippines, Indonesia, Myanmar, India, Thailand, and then an average of those countries, of all the 40 countries I showed before. What do you notice when you look at this chart? Hope you can see. Okay, the different colors here, listening, reading, writing, speaking, and then overall. Okay, so as you can see, the orange 
is the uh, by far the highest in every country. Yeah, you see that? What's the lowest? Put it in the chat if you'd like, or speak up. Exactly, yes, writing. So, uh, writing is the lowest, and listening is the highest in every country. The other two, reading and speaking, what can we say, I see speaking is, tends to be a little bit lower than reading, but um, by far you can see that writing is the lowest in every country. I will be perfectly honest with you. When you take a IELTS preparation course, you're gonna learn some techniques for how to handle reading questions and listening questions. However, reading and listening are both the types of skills that take a long time to improve. So uh, in an eight week course, you're not really gonna improve your reading skills very much. Now, you will improve your ability to understand and what to do with a reading question but reading takes a long time and a lot of work to improve. Same thing with listening, perhaps even more so. Now, we, as English teachers, we don't want to accept the notion that teaching someone to improve their reading or listening is impossible. All they need to do is just do more reading and listening. Well, then what's our job? However, speaking and writing are skills that you can improve in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, they are uh, things that, at least in terms of the IELTS test, things that you can do which satisfy what it is that they're looking for in the marking. And that's something that a, a class can help you with. Can you do much can you improve your writing or your speaking much on your own? Yes, you can. There are some resources, but it, does, it takes guided, uh, guided tutoring with uh, an expert to, uh, let them in, to really um, improve those skills. Right. In anything you do in life, if you want to improve your performance, Look at what it is that you need help with most. And from this chart, the reason I wanted to show you this is to convince you that the receptive skills of reading and listening, they kind of are what they are, but your productive skills of speaking and writing are things that you can improve, not necessarily because of your English, but because of your knowledge of the test itself. So what I recommend is everyone is work most on your writing skills. That is where you're gonna make the biggest change in your IELTS score in the short term. In the, the stats that we showed worldwide prove it out. Here's an advertisement that we uh, proudly, very proud of Ms., um, of our student here, Ms. May Hain Pett, who, look at these scores, fantastic overall, an 8.0. But it, again, it fits the same pattern that we saw worldwide uh, and in the um, uh, and in other recent students, listening, reading, speaking, fantastic, writing six point five. What if she wanted to apply for a course that required a seven point oh? Your eight point oh isn't going to help you. You got to have seven. So improve where you are weakest, and for most of you, I almost bet all of you. Uh, that is all of you one person <laughs> that is going to be in the writing tasks that's where you need to concentrate so how do i do that well what you want to remember most of all is that with the ielts exam you're not writing an essay to convince someone of something it's not a persuasive essay or an entertainment essay it's you know, something that you'd write for a magazine or something to inspire people. It may not even be an essay that asks you to discuss something. Okay? Discursive means discuss. It's not automatically gonna be a discuss both views and give your own opinion type of essay. Well, what 
What kind of essay is it that you're being asked to write? It's an IELTS essay. And what is that? Well, an IELTS essay is one that satisfies, and it only does this, the band descriptors. We just talked about that before. The band descriptors. That is what an IELTS test, uh, um, uh, an IELTS uh, writing task is designed to do. Okay? So if you follow the band descriptors, you will get a higher mark. That's often students will ask me, is this thing that I've written, is it band seven or not? Well, there's lots of reasons I shouldn't tell them that. Uh, but generally speaking, if you don't know if it's a band seven, it probably isn't. Because you need to understand what they're asking for to get there. Who are these, what are these band descriptors? Well, there's four of them, four members of the, the band, and they are T-A-T-R, task achievement or task response. C-C, coherence and cohesion. L-R, lexical resource. G-R, these are, these are abbreviations that we use. And all four of them are equal, okay? Not, there's not one that's more important than another. They all have equal weight on your final score. Uh, and um, you need to understand what they mean. So to understand what they mean, they give you this. Oh my God, what is this? Oh. <laughs> the, I have a handout, which we don't have any here. <laughs> the handout would show you the writing here, what you see on the screen, which is the band descriptors for writing task number one. You see there's four columns for the four criteria. And what I wanted to do in this, uh, in this workshop is to do some exercises that will really make you understand what the four band descriptors are and how uh, they are marked and what the difference is between the different uh, mode, the, the different um, levels, the different. So if you could see this, so they mean more than one thing, right? Uh, but what does that mean? Lexical resource, lexical uh, is an adjective to describe vocabulary, okay, words and word choices. So where do And then task response or task achievement is about answering the question that's given to you. Coherence and cohesion means writing something in an organized way so that it's easy to understand and follow. Lexical resources is your vocabulary, and grammar is uh, how can we take these words that we find in the band descriptors and translate them in. Okay, hopefully you've seen these before. But, like I said, they're written in such a way that they're not the easiest things to understand. Uh, now, we, there are some things that you'll notice that, um, are, that you can find in uh, multiple bands in the same category. So let's take a look at, say, task achievement. And as I talked about before, what is task achievement? It's about answering the question. Okay? What words do you find in common in bands 6, 7, and 8? What phrases that you can find? Uh, uh, fully addresses all parts of the task. Sufficiently addresses all parts of the task. Addresses all parts of the task. Addresses all parts of the task, although some parts more fully covered than others. And if we go down to five, there's five, addresses the task only partially. Now, so that would seem to me to mean that what, when they say address the task, what do they mean? Address the task. Okay. Well, is, is it anything to do with your house number? Is it like your house address? No, no, no. Now, to address something, if I'm walking down the road and I see you, and I address you, what do I do? I say, hey, hi, how are you? Oh, 
bottom thing. You just keep walking. Okay. So that's the way to think about it. You need to address all parts of the task. You can't leave any of them out. Uh, and if I just say, hey, how's it going? Have I completely addressed the person I see? No, not really. You've addressed them, but have you fully addressed them? No. So by looking at common words that we find throughout the bands, <clears throat> we can understand what it is they're looking for. And then the first thing it tells us is that you must answer all parts of the question. Uh, and how do we know what those are? Well, that's part of the skill is identifying how many parts a question has and making sure that you address each of them. Okay. Now, what else do we find in uh, band six and seven and also in band five? Four. And the next point talks about position. Four presents a position, but it's unclear. Expresses a position, but the development is not always not clear, no conclusion. Go up to six. Presents a position. And here, what do we do? We present, extend, and support. Oh, and a clear position throughout the response. Now in band eight, it changes. It doesn't present a position. It says, presents a well-developed response. Well, what's that? How is a response different than a, than a position? Okay. Well, a position is a word that means basically an opinion, an opinion, and not all of them, but most IELTS questions do ask you to present some type of opinion. And what happens if your position is different at the beginning of the essay than it is at the end of the essay? Okay? Or the reader is not clear what you think. Well, then you're not getting the seven of presents a clear position throughout the response from beginning to end. So, in understanding what the band scores mean, knowing what they mean by things like positions, okay, uh, and response is uh, very important. Now, band eight, where it says develop a fully developed response. Now, we talk about this, these are uh, the IELTS teachers, and the general opinion is that if you're given a question where there are two sides to an issue, do you have to present both sides of the issue? Well, if it asks you to, yes, but it doesn't always tell you to. Sometimes it just says, what is your opinion? Do you need to present both sides? Well, if you want to get an eight, you do. But if, it's harder. If you're happy with a seven, well, then you can present a single a position that is well-developed for just that one side, and that's fine. You can get your seventh. You can. It qualifies you for that. Okay, so in this document, there are words that are you need to understand as much as you do the words that you're going to use in your writing. Okay. Descriptors. Now, at this point, I have a, a worksheet for you. Okay, then my last point is this. So I often see this in people's writing, where they will have a high score for grammar, lexical, say 7-7. Seven, seven. Their coherence and cohesion would be a 6. And then their task response, or their task achievement, uh, is a 5. So just like, just like writing is the one of the band descriptor, the bands that are the skills that is, tends to be lowest for everybody. Same thing with in the um, writing task itself. The four band descriptors, task response tends to be the one that gives people the most problems. So if you could boil down the IELTS exam into what is the most critical thing to do well in, it's all equal, right? But the one you're most likely to mess up in is writing, and 
in writing, the one you're the part of writing that you're most likely to make a mistake in is in task response. So that's what you need to focus on, is what's your weakest in, is what the weakest, the weakest of the weakest, okay? So, so just as writing is something to be focused on, so is task response and task achievement. Uh, and this has little to do with your ability in English. It's about doing what the question asks you to do. And in the next uh, hour, which will be in a few weeks, uh, we'll do this again, and we're going to look at writing task number one and what it is that they ask you to do. The, uh, and in task one, in the academic test, you are uh, given a, a map or a diagram or a chart, and you're asked to describe the main features of it. And when you look in the band descriptors for task achievement, you will find that it talks about fulfilling the requirements of the task throughout. And that's what we'll look at next time. Now, through guided class situations, either with uh, Edulink or Study 7. So, uh, here in the last one minute, I'm able to answer any questions. I can probably, we don't have any questions. Okay, very good. All right, thank you for the folks who showed up. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And come back in about a month when we do the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome.